I'm fascinated by the Fox primetime lineup. I think it's, I think it has evolved dramatically over the last 20 years to the point where I think in some ways what you're doing on Surviving Jack is a direct lineage to what maybe Al Bundy was like. Do you see yourself as part of this thing or do you see it sort of as a standalone? Because there is a great legacy of these kinds of fathers on television. I uh, view my show and my character, and it's the reason why I signed on for the show, I, thought, I found it refreshing and I actually thought it was kind of missing from the landscape. I always feel that what is often take, taken for comedic fodder is the uh, clueless parents. It's not how I was brought up, so I have no relationship to that. You know, the parents ran the show in, in, you know, in my household. So that's my reality. That's where kind of where it rests. And also, I loved the, the show, how it was written, was the two parents actually loved each other and liked each other. Right and also have very realistic arguments when they do fight. Yes, and when you, what we said, we would be, we'd often say this is, there's no eye rolling. It's not, you know, the father goes, does something, and then the wife goes, right. oh, Jack. You know, that's not funny to us. No, they actually are engaged in conversations. Uh, yeah. You find that the, the, the arguments with Rachel are, are tinged with sarcasm. They're tinged with, with a, a real bitterness, but also, a, and a resentment that also is sort of born out of love that they have for each other. Yeah, and uh, uh, hopefully uh, people tuning in will have some sort of relation, relationship or will be able to relate to two people with their own points of view. It's, in, it's okay, you're in an environment where you can express it, and there's, you know, so that's conflict, and that's where you get drama and or comedy. You know, obviously it's based on a, you know, uh, the, the show's creator, his father, his relationship, but you've often talked about the fact that this is a third you, a third your dad, and a third his experience. Mm -hmm. So how do you reconcile that, and how do you do that early on in a show like this? One of the good things was, um, and I love this, uh, Justin Halpern, upon whom the series is based, his relationship with his dad, his old man didn't want to meet me. He's like, ah, <laughs> he didn't even want to see the show. He goes, if it's a hit, I'll start watching it. I love that attitude. I also would not have wanted to meet him, um, I wouldn't say want. I wasn't looking to meet him. It would have been great to have, only because there's nothing I could have done with it. There, would, there would just wouldn't have been enough time for me to check him out, vibe him out, and then go, oh, okay, I'll play you. You know, initially it sort of looked like um, a show about a dad who was kind of a d But certainly as you watch the show, it's far more subtle and far more thoughtful than that. My character was written with that sense of empathy. Uh, he was written, and I think this was very helpful, and it was based on truth, which is the love that he has for his wife is the most overt emotion that he possesses. Because he's doing this for her, essentially. Yes, yes, but beyond that, I mean, he, uh, he'll keep everything kind of close to the vest, but you ask about his wife, he realizes, and he is not embarrassed to say, I cannot survive without that woman in my life. She, I need her. You, my, my child, nah, I don't need you so much. <laughs> but even with that, you know, he, I think you know, he uses that as a tool. I mean, I, and I think that's how it comes off, that he's kind of winking, going, you know, I, I don't want to smother you with too much love gravy. Just please, just live your life. Don't get too emotional, and everything will be fine. Were you looking for something after all these years on whether it was Oz Law, Law and Order? Were you looking for something that was more rooted in your more familiar reality, something that you could certainly relate to? Yeah, no. Uh, I just, no. I was uh, looking for whatever the voice in my head. <laughs> And not that voice, the other voice. <laughs> the voice in my head. But, you know, I do think that I was leaning towards uh, lighter fares. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, I've been pretty heavy. <laughs> the material's been pretty heavy. You know. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, not to say sodomizing a fellow prisoner isn't fun and funny. But also knowing that what you're going to be dealing with is something that's more familiar, that you get to bring in some ways your father to work. That mm. you get I mean, that seems to be a, that, that would add a little thing to my step as I got out of bed. Yeah. yeah, that's a good, I'll agree with that. And, you know, my father just died recently. Um, and, you know, I find myself every once in a while going, well, you know, I, w I wish he'd been alive to just see, you know, to get a whiff of this. That's yeah. all. I mean, is that part of what this does for you is to, to keep him alive? I mean, I don't want to get too personal nor no. too metaphysical about it, but, I mean, it does have that. 
No, no, I, I, I guess no. I think it's truly just that, that every once in a while you go, oh, I wonder what he would have thought. Yeah. That's all. So that's why I would think that doing something like this would be um, cathartic. Yes. In a way that maybe Perf those aren't. Perfect word. Yeah. It's cathartic. Um, there's no other word. That's it. You hit it. It's, it's just, uh, it's nice. It's a nice change of pace. It's a challenge. Uh, that's one of the reasons why I was, you know, it was, it was time to move on for me. Right. Um, you know, I'm all about comfort, but, you know, I, I was starting to feel like a house cat. You know, which is, can I actually, if I get locked out of the house, can I actually fend for myself? Right. So. Yeah. And did you miss comedy? I mean, certainly, you know, I think the, obviously one of the first times I had seen you was What Hot American Summer. Yeah. I assume that you missed it as well. Yeah, and you know, but, and that's actually why I would do that sort of stuff on my, and any, uh, opening I had. Yeah. What I've always admired about your career is the fact that you are, you have always been really willing to take these smaller parts. Yeah, that's actually the highest compliment I get is when uh, a kid will stop me on the street go, dude, I loved you in Wet Hot American Summer. And really? I, I go, you truly are a fan. In my career, everything I've done has been a very clear purpose for me. And I have actually found that I've gotten close to a lot of projects. And I would say 80% of them, the ones that I didn't get, it was because at the end of the day, you know, I was just doing it because it's what I was supposed to do. Right. So everything's played out. So what I'm saying is everything's played out the way it's supposed to play out. Well, congratulations. Yeah. You deserve it. Thanks. <laughs>